Hi, this is Joe. Thanks for coming back for another video. I picked up an inexpensive heating pad, keeping a fermenter, a beer fermenter, warm while the beer is fermenting. And I want to put this on a temperature controller and I keep the temperature of the fermenter at a, a set temperature range. Unfortunately, these inexpensive heating pads have a cutoff timer at anywhere from 60 minutes to 120 minutes and when the temperature controller does turn off the heating pad in order to get the heating pad to turn on again you have to push this button again so using this as is in a temperature with a temperature controller it doesn't work very well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to remove the uh, circuit board inside of this and rewire this uh, controller here so you can uh, bypass that uh, built-in timer cutoff and use your temperature controller to control the temperature of the heating pad. Uh, safety warnings, if you haven't worked with mains current before, do not do this. Get somebody else to help you as you could electrocute yourself. I've done some testing on these with the uh, circuit board exposed and the input and output is showing at 120 volts. Uh, this is uh, US current or whatever country you're in with your mains current. It, it's the same on both sides. So that way you don't have to plug this in and test with a meter. I've already done that. So just beware and make sure you follow safety procedures when you're uh, working with uh, mains current. So I'm going to take this apart and show you how to bypass the uh, built-in uh, controller board and then we'll show you some tests using uh, an external temperature controller. So let's get started. We've taken the temperature uh, controller of the heating pad apart and we're now going to remove the uh, controller board and then we're going to use this housing and that way you have uh, the housing as a, pr a protective measure to keep yourself from being exposed to the mains current. So let's go ahead and remove this uh, controller. We're just going to clip the wires here. Notice there's an input side and an output side. And we're going to keep the case lined up. And what we're going to do, again, make sure you've unplugged this before you open the case or do anything inside the temperature controller. Make sure it's not plugged in. So we're going to come in now and we're going to snip the wires from the controller. So at this point, we've removed the controller. The wire support on the left-hand side of the wire was too short. So we didn't have enough room to strip the wires in order to be able to extend the wires inside the case. So what I did was I cut off the back portion of this wire support. Then I drilled out this little rubber piece here so I could slide more wire, more length of wire in there. So we're still going to get the support inside the case, but we will now be able to slide these wires in to give us more length in order to uh, to increase the length of the wire inside the case, uh, strip and solder and heat shrink the wires inside the case here. So you may have to do that when you're doing it yourself. When you're looking at the wires, if you'll notice one side of the wire is very smooth, the other side of the wire has small ridges. So when you're soldering these two wires together, make sure you get the ridge side to the ridge side and the smooth side to the smooth side. Even though there's no polarity on uh, AC, you still have a common or neutral wire and you want and then you have the hot wire so you want to make sure those wires match up on both sides because if you'll notice the plug the side that has the the neutral wire is the wider pronged plug so you want to make sure you maintain the ridge side to the ridge side and the smooth side to the smooth side 
I decided to cut both ends of the wire supports and then that way I could pull the wire through and give me extra wire at both ends and then all I have to do is uh, splice the same wires together and then heat shrink the wires uh, over the splices so we'll go ahead now we'll solder the wires put the heat shrink on and then that way and we can just put the uh, cover back on it'll be a little cleaner doing it this way we have the wires soldered and we have the sh heat shrink in place now all we have to do is screw the cover back on and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do some testing with the external uh, temperature controller notice I have the heating pad around the bucket I have it bungee tied to the bucket I have the probe taped to the exposed side of the bucket a piece of insulation around the bucket so the probe will pick up the temperature of the bucket and not the surrounding air I then have the electric blanket plugged into my temperature controller you notice our temperature is 66.3 degrees with a target of 78 degrees so what we'll do is we'll let that sit for a while and you can feel the heating pad is warm so it's starting to heat up we'll let the temperature controller start adjusting the temperature upward to our target of 78 degrees and the temperature controller just reached 78 degrees and then notice the uh, the little red light on the out is flashing so that means the temperature controller now is going to uh, stop or proportionally decrease the heating cycle and uh, we will try to stay right around 78 degrees it may fluctuate up or down a degree or so but that's just the way the temperature controller works hope you enjoyed the video we'll see you next time